All righty. Happy Tuesday, guys. Um, with yesterday's uh, test results uh, and being all negative player-wise uh, and through the guidance of our medical professionals, we are going to begin uh, the opportunity to resume workouts today. Uh, obviously, uh, we have been off seven of the last nine days since Utah was seven days of no physical uh, contact. Act, uh, as far as uh, um, being able to get on-field engagement and, and drill work together. So this is going to be uh, basically a strength and conditioning day for us, uh, as well as some light field work, uh, getting back into function, uh, non-contact light field work, uh, basically getting back into uh, football shape uh, and uh, being able to move them around a little bit. Um, we will... Uh, we will, based on uh, today's and tomorrow's testing, uh, be able to uh, start um, uh, uh, practice uh, full pad engagement uh, tomorrow. Um, as you know, today's, uh, it, because of the Sunday game, today is a Monday force, and this is uh, what we usually do on Monday uh, is a light workout. Tomorrow will be a full pad practice. Um, we're, as, as Tim said, we're really excited. The kids are really excited about having the opportunity uh, to get started again and, and get in preparation to, to try to go 1-0 uh, against a good Washington State team. Um, looking at Washington State, uh, just start starting with Coach Rolovich, uh, I thought Washington State did a, a really great job when they hired Rolo. Um, you know, after after um, losing Coach Leach, um, they really found somebody that uh, really fit um, system wise offensively uh, the personnel that they have. Um, the systems are different. Um, uh, you know, Rolo's system is different uh, than Mike's, but I, I will say this: he he does the same philosophy uh, of using 10 personnel, four wides package, spreading you out across the field and attacking every inch of field, um, whether it's vertically, horizontally, in between the tackles with the run game, uh, doing a really nice job. And I thought it was a really nice fit. I mean, when he got hired, I think we all in the league said, man, this is going to be a pain in the butt because um, Rolo's a damn good coach and it fits what they have. And you can see the results um, already. I think they've played two really good games. I thought they played were very well versus Oregon State and really held their own with Oregon for, for three quarters. Um, it starts offensively uh, with their quarterback, uh, Jaden Delora. Um, he's a kid that we recruited uh, out of Hawaii uh, that we got a lot of respect for. Uh, and he's kind of got that it factor. He's a winner. He, he finds ways to make creative plays, a uh, talented arm that can make all the throws. And he's protecting the ball really well uh, this year. I mean, one turnover total. Uh, on the year. Uh, McIntosh, their running back, um, is, is really provided them balance, to be honest with you. 119 yards uh, a game right now. Um, you think of, you know, you think of that air raid or, or spread system, uh, and, and really they're rushing the ball for, uh, I think it's 164 a game right now. Uh, and McIntosh is providing 119 yards a game. So Rolo's really doing a nice job of, of creating balance within that system. And then they got two electric uh, wide outs in Bell and Harris that uh, both are averaging eight catches a game, um, 100 yards a game. So they, they got the perfect combination of a talented quarterback, two wide elite wide outs on the outside that you have to that you have to respect. And then a, and then a ground game inside uh, that's producing not only yards, uh, but points, and, you know, 33 points uh, a game right now. So uh, it'll be a challenge. Defensively, um, uh, the, the two kids I really like, Daniel Isom, uh, you know, they, they'll they play some two-eye coverage and then they'll roll that safety down in the box and play cover three or cover one. And Daniel's doing a very nice job of filling that kind of hybrid safety linebacker uh, type spot and really uh, doing a great job of making plays. And then Jihad Woods, uh, their redshirt senior linebacker, has had a lot of experience, uh, know him well, has produced a lot of plays in this league, is playing like a senior uh, with a lot of experience and leading them uh, in tackles. Uh, it'll be a great challenge for us uh, Sunday, Sunday afternoon game at the Coliseum. How cool is that? Our, our kids are really excited for it. Our staff is really excited for it. Uh, and we can't wait to play. From the injury standpoint, um, uh, right now, as of today, uh, EA is still under concussion protocol. We'll see how that goes through the week. And Raylan is um, 
uh, still has that foot sprain. We are going to test him today. Uh, he is feeling a lot better. Uh, we're going to put him in some change of direction drills today and see kind of where it's at. So I'll be able to give you more information on that uh, later in the week. With that, uh, I'll answer any questions that you got. Okay, and a reminder, just raise your hand and I'll call on you. Otherwise, uh, keep yourself on mute. Uh, our first question will come from uh, Ryan Young. Uh, Clay, just to confirm with the quarantine process, is it 10 days for the positives and 14 days for the contact tracers? In that case, would those seven guys for contact tracing not be available this week regardless? No, we actually get, get players back, Ryan, um, this week, uh, and Washington State does too. That's that, that's the reason we're moving the game back. It gives us the opportunity uh, by moving the game Friday to Sunday. It allows us to garner um, the adequate number of players that we need at a certain position to be able to play this game. Um, and in talking, uh, Coach Rolovich and I talk every day, just like I did with Coach Durrell last week, to just get updates on both teams and where we stand uh, and we're very thankful not only to the league uh, but both universities for moving this game back to Sunday because it does give us the amount of bodies that we need uh, at a certain position to be able to make this happen. So how many of those 11 do you get back? Um, you know, obviously, the, I, I, I can provide you the exact number once all the testing because they still got to go through. So I can't give you a definite number. Uh, but I know I will say this. It's an adequate enough number uh, to be able to play ball. OK, uh, Ryan Kirchie. Clay, with the hope that some of those guys will be coming back, how much are you planning on relying on maybe younger, more inexperienced players? Yeah, like I said last week, Ryan, I, I, th I was really excited uh, to have the, to see some of these young kids get the chance uh, to really make a major contribu contribution. Um, and we're going to have to see as we go through the week, you know, we'll be prepping some young kids during the week because we, we don't, we, our anticipation is we won't get some of the veteran players back uh, until later in the, later this week. So they're going to get the reps and, uh, you know, based on how they're handling things and, and where we're at at the end of the week, uh, you can anticipate a, a young kid or two having to be in there. And what an exciting time for them. You know, that's that's why you come to SC is to have the opportunity to compete and, and play early. And, um, you know, the one thing that I'm, I'm really proud of our staff that we challenged our staff going into training camp was to grow this group from the ground up. Could just not knowing the situation with the virus, with injuries, that you could look up and there would be some people that, you know, would be down the line, maybe a two, maybe a three that would have to go in and, and play for you. Uh, and if you just focused on the first group, you, you were doing your team a disservice. Um, and so we really, um, I, I love how T.O. practiced. I love how Graham's practiced, where everybody was getting reps. Everybody was learning. Um, we dedicated time to work with the ones, the twos, the threes, get them valuable reps. And I think you see, I think you've seen that pay off. I mean, you look at Kanai Malaga. Last, uh, that was a backup linebacker comes in and, and the guy just has an, uh, an unbelievable game um, as, as a backup linebacker. Um, that's what you want. And so um, there will, you know, there are probably going to be some young people in there Sunday. It's exciting. Uh, I, I can't wait to watch it play. I was excited last week. Uh, you know, everybody, probably other folks would say, oh, my gosh, that's a challenge. And, and I was just excited to watch it play, you know. So uh, we've, we've looked at this thing as every day is a gift to get on the grass. And we get a gift today. We get to go on the grass today. So uh, we're just thankful for that. And we'll get these young people ready and, and get them ready to go if called upon. And it seems like with me, uh, the first group of, of players who entered contact tracing, if their clock had started the previous Sunday, then that two weeks would end right on the day of the game. Uh, are you worried at all about those players not having any practice time or, or being off as long as they have been? Yeah, we've worked with our medical professionals uh, with the contact. Obviously, you can't do anything with the guys that um, uh, have um, um, uh, the positive cases, but we've worked with our medical professionals on a, on a plan that allows our guys to stay in shape and stay in condition. Uh, and, um, 
uh, and are functioning in that plan right now. So we get the opportunity uh, to hopefully get those guys back. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of testing to go. I mean, every day, sometimes it's one time, sometimes it's twice a day. Uh, so, it, you know, we'll have a total number of guys uh, and we and we're anticipating if everything stays and trends the way it's going, which is in a good direction, um, that we're going to have the adequate number to be able to play the game. Uh, shotgun. Hey, Clay, you talked about some of the young guys that being, being having to step up and practicing this. Will you see, foresee any other adjustments you have to make in practice just with having a certain amount of players out? Yeah, that's a great question, Chuck. And I, I actually got that yesterday. I, 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 somebody asked me the question, Coach, uh, are you, during this time, are you experimenting with any new schemes? And I said, this is not really the time to, to, to try to put new things on, on, on a, a young person's plate. You know, when we walked into this, this season, Chuck, and we said, okay, you know, you have this Bible. And we, we've got to decide what we want to be really good at and shrink that down. We've got seven weeks to be able to see how many games we can get in. And there's, there's a good possibility that young people, freshmen or people contributing for the first time, will have to go in and play a game. So we shrunk the Bible down on both sides. Obviously, offensively, we're an execution-based offense. We do what we do defensively. I've been so proud of T.O. because each game plan, you don't see a ton of calls. He pulls the calls that he needs. He makes it simple, Simon, for the players. And I see them playing extremely fast. Um, I thought last week was by far kids were just flying around. And it wasn't from the nature of, oh, gosh, are we fooling Utah? It was we were doing our stuff really well uh, and being exactly where we're supposed to be. Um, some of the dive option stuff that they were doing uh, was just absolutely uh, – absolutely performed perfect from Greg Johnson forcing the pitch on the quarterback and railing it and, and Isaiah being right where they need to be on the pitch. That's what you want to be. You want to pick a couple things our kids are really good at um, and, and master those and allow young people not to, I've always thought that if you create confusion, you create hesitation and hesitation, this game's going to get you beat and get you hurt. And so we've really taken the opposite approach of really shrinking the Bible down uh, and picking a couple things that we can get good at a game and let our kids play fast. Less so with the, with the game plan though, but just with practice and kind of your practice schedule or like, are there certain drills that maybe yeah. you can't do now just because of this? Of yeah, th this is going to be a really um, logistical challenge this week to be honest with you um, uh, because we are going to have to be creative um, we are going to have to probably service each other to be honest with you um, rather than usually you have service teams that you that you can go out uh, but we'll probably have to service each other which we've talked about um, you, you know we'll have to do some things uh, basically uh, some additional walkthroughs because you're just not going to have to be able to have enough bodies um, to be able to have the amount of physical contact that you need um, so we will um, we will have to it will not be a normal practice week for us so it'll be some logistics and some special situations that we're going to have to do. I'll go to Adam Grossbard. Do you anticipate having any players working at different positions this week, just in case, you know, that position that has been affected by testing and contact mm -hmm. tracing needs additional bodies on Sunday? Uh, no, we, we don't plan, Adam, uh, to be able to do that. Um, we feel like we're going to be in a good spot come Sunday. Um, and uh, um, to be honest with you, um, even um, – you know, to be able to force one guy to go over and learn within a week uh, and throw him out there is just not advantageous. Um, not enough time uh, to be able to get a kid ready. Uh, and and really, uh, that that's why they ended up coming up with the rules of the numbers by position, just so you weren't in that situation. Because um, it's not fair to a kid and it's not fair to a team. Um, so um, we feel like if, again, if everything trends the way it's going right now and thank very thankful to our medical professionals who really guided us through this first stint uh, of, of really positive cases for us. Um, we feel like uh, we've done a good job of kind of shutting this thing down, hopefully. Uh, and um, we'll see how that progresses through the week. Uh, but uh, to have yesterday, you know, uh, for our players, no positive test, man, that was awesome. And so um, hopefully that will continue 
and that will allow us to have the numbers to not have to make those position changes. Uh, we'll go to Keeley. Is there any concern with EA's recovery timeline right now? Uh, no, Keely, I, you know, every, every concussion is different, you know, uh, and, um, the one thing that we don't ever mess around with, um, is, is the mind and the brain. Uh, and, um, and sometimes, sometimes it is, uh, shorter and sometimes it's longer. I think we're, um, I think we're, I think this is day 17 or 18, um, post, post game. Um, and sometimes they take up to 21 days, sometimes longer. You know, but we have a, a systematic approach that that medical professionals, it's not a coach, it's not a trainer, it's it's literally a, a systematic approach that neurologists and, and doctors uh, have to clear him, uh, you know, and I've always gone by the approach, one, you're medically cleared, two, you're confident, and what does my gut feel? And all three got to be yeses before we do that. So we're never going to mess around. And if it takes a, a extra, if it takes days, weeks, whatever it is, we're not playing around with that. Um, so I know he is improving. He's had much improvement from day one to where he is now. Uh, but, uh, you know, there is you have to get rid of symptoms and you have to exert. Uh, then you have to do a physical uh, exertion test and then a computer test uh, and then be improved by our doctors uh, medically cleared. So um, there is a, a protocol to it. We're following that protocol and, and it is what it is. Um, it, however many days it takes where he gets cleared and, and is confident, uh, that's, that's what we'll do. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned, I know you don't have to get into specifics, but you mentioned no player tested positive. Has COVID-19 affected your staff at all? Uh, as of right now, everybody that's in the building has, has tested negative. We really haven't re had to report staffers. Um, we've just done players. Um, I'll leave that to any athletic administration, but uh, I can tell you everybody that's in the building today uh, is, is negative. Uh, we'll go to Eric McKinney. So you, you mentioned before the season that actually playing the season was kind of this, this final piece of the recruiting puzzle and, and understanding you can't get into any specifics with, with names. Uh, how, how, what's your sense of how the season has gone, um, played out with, with recruits and, and your message here now that you're you know, a couple weeks away from this early signing period? Yeah, you, you know, we're you look up and we're just about two weeks away here um, the, from signing day. And the one thing that I was extremely hopeful for um, uh, in this was that recruits would get to watch us play. Um, and um, I'm hoping they get to see us three more times uh, before, you know, before that signing day comes about at least twice that Wednesday will be two days prior to the conference championship game. But uh, to be able to get two more opportunities and hopefully earn the earn the right to go to a conference championship shows the progress that this team has made. I think our staff has done an amazing job this recruiting cycle. Um, our, our class is not done yet. Uh, there's still some big fish out there that we're that we still are, are working on. Um, and you, you know, as we say, believe nothing until the ink is dry. You, you know, you can assume nothing. And so, um, there's a lot of work left to be done. Uh, it's really daylight till dark. Not only preparing a team, but uh, being on Zoom calls and telephone calls. Uh, on, every night uh, with, with recruits down the stretch here uh, is important uh, developing those relationships. Um, so um, it, it is something that I'm very glad that, you know, our, our recruits got to watch our team play uh, and to see these guys develop. And I'm hoping to get uh, two more opportunities so to them to view our team because confidence builds each and every week. Is there anything that's come out of this whole situation that, that you see maybe being a, a long-term impact on, on recruiting, how, how you go through the process or anything like that? Say it one more time, I lost you. Is, is there anything that's come out of kind of the, the whole COVID situation that you see me maybe being kind of a, a long-term sticking thing with, with recruiting that, that has maybe helped or, or anything? Um, you know, probably the biggest thing with recruiting is, is going to be when it does come back online, hopefully, hopefully comes back online April 15th, um, how important it is to be able to get the 22s on campus. We basically usually, you know, from that March 
to now was such an important time for young men across the country to be able to visit campus, uh, be able to maybe watch a game, be able to uh, come see your football family and what's it about. And so you've lost basically a year. Uh, you're going to lose basically a year of you've had these technological relationships via Zoom and calls. But, it, you know, it, until they get a feel for what Los Angeles is about, what USC is about and truly get on campus, um, that's probably the biggest thing uh, that I've taken away is going to be how important it is and, and the sense of urgency uh, if and when by April 15th we're in a good position. Uh, that we get the opportunity to get these kids back on campus uh, and allow them to kind of reintroduce themselves. And so for some of them, it'll be the first time uh, that they've been. So that's probably the biggest, uh, the biggest takeaway I have. Uh, Antonio. Clay, could you walk us through what last Thursday was like for you? You start the day kind of cautiously optimistic about the game, then, then it gets mm -hmm. canceled. Uh, can you walk us through that? Uh, yeah, you know, you always, you always are in a position that, um, you know, each day is, is you're hoping and praying you get great test results. And, you know, after, um, we had the positive test coming back from, uh, Utah, uh, and the contact tracing, uh, you're like, okay, um, hopefully that we've limited this number. Hopefully you don't have any more positive tests uh, from our players. And, you know, all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, you, you know, you look up and, and you have another positive uh, that shut that game down. And you've worked so hard. You've already put a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you put four days of just grinding and work and investment uh, to, to all of a sudden be on a Thursday and have to go tell your team, Guys, I'm sorry, we're not going to get this opportunity, uh, and it's it's gut wrenching. Um, it, it's you know, we've taken the approach that every day on the grass is a gift. I mean, I, I can't wait to get on this grass today uh, with the kids. Um, but that's the way we've approached it, and when it's taken away from you, um, yeah, it's it's gut gut wrenching because you know you lost the opportunity, and we knew. I mean, that game. That game was so important for both universities, and we were so excited. I mean, two undefeated teams, to uh, not only for the season, uh, but for, you know, in the Pac-12 South, the significance of that game uh, for the Pac-12 South championship. Um, on national TV, day game on grass uh, in the Coliseum. I mean, uh, it was uh, – it's something that each and every kid looked forward to um, and, you know, and our staff. So, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a body blow, um, but man, I, I'm so appreciative to our, I'm so appreciative to our kids, um, uh, to our kids for what they immediately, when we said, Hey guys, Thursday, we're going to need to take Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday retest and retest for PCR test Friday and Monday, see where we're at. And I need your discipline. I need you to isolate. I need you to protect us and, and, and the team and, and for them to be able to be in that position. Oh my gosh. That's, that's been absolutely awesome uh, that uh, we get back on the grass today. So I appreciate their discipline and what they've done. Hey, we have time for one more, uh, Ryan Karchi. Clay, now that you've gone through this experience that a, a lot of the other Pac-12 teams have had to go through too, what do you feel like you've learned just about the degree of difficulty in, in trying to carry on a season amid this COVID-19 outbreak? And what maybe have you learned about your team too as well? Too? Yes. Um, the one thing that I, I've learned is, uh, Ryan, to be honest with you, is just how much I appreciate our medical professionals um, to be to have the guidance that we do and the protocols in place and the testing. I just I don't know how you would do it as a coach if if you don't have this unbelievable support system guiding you through and giving and and taking that taking that advice, listening to the advice and doing exactly what they're saying. Um, you know, it's it's allowed us to be successful up to this point, um, really, and even even with this hiccup. They, they have they have guided us perfectly through it um, and so uh, and given us the opportunity to have a chance to play this weekend um, you know what have I learned about the team uh, just true appreciation for the men that they are um, I keep on using the words toughness discipline united 
because that's what they've shown, the toughness to deal with adversity since I, I, I'll i never forget the day as long as I live, March 15th, when we walked out of this building and didn't know when we were going to get to come back. I'll never forget coming back July 6th and seeing the happiness on their faces to be back on campus and to be progressing towards something. Uh, I'll never forget the the each and every Saturday uh, to be able to be on that field with them and be able to compete and their toughness to deal with adversity, uh, their discipline of, of each and every day sacrifice to make sure that we stay healthy, make sure that we get to play the game we love and then just how unified they've been uh, through this whole ordeal um, has been amazing to me. Uh, you know, some of them will go on to play in the NFL, some of them will be professionals in life and in business and in other areas. But I've always said, I've always thought this, the good Lord puts you in situations, adversity to make sure that you're complete and whole. And this situation uh, is, is only gonna benefit them uh, to understand how to deal with adversity later in life. So if there's one silver lining, I, I do think that this is making us all more complete uh, as human beings. All right, <clears throat> thank you Clay for joining us this morning. Uh